Welcome to another tutorial video from Tullamats. Make sure and subscribe for more. In this video, we're looking at what's known as completing the square. Completing the square is just an alternative way of writing a quadratic equation. Uh, it has some useful piece of information we can gain from our completing the square. It can help us to find what are known as the turning points, but we'll get to them in a little bit more detail when we look at functions and calculus. But in this video, we're just looking at how to complete the square. We're going to look at two examples, example one and example two. You'll notice the only difference between them is that the number or the coefficient in front of the x squares are one and two. So the one on the left here, example one, is straightforward enough when the coefficient is just going to be one. But when I get to numbers in front of the x squared, like two or three or anything greater than one, they get a little bit more trickier. So that's why we're going to look at both examples here. Um, because this example two is common enough on exam questions. But first of all, let's look at example one. So complete the square given the quadratic equation x squared minus eight x minus three. Now it's straightforward enough to complete the square. Basically all you're doing is you're adding and subtracting onto my quadratic equation half the coefficient of the x squared. Now that sounds a little bit complicated, but let's go through it. So what I'm saying there is, I'm halving the coefficient of the x. So the coefficient is basically the number in front of it. So the number in front of the x in example one is minus eight. And I'm halving it or dividing it by two, which is minus four. And then we are squaring it. So when I square minus four, I get minus four by minus four, which is positive 16. So that's basically the first step. You half the coefficient of the x and you square it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add on and subtract 16 to my quadratic equation. Again, when we write it down, it'll make a little bit more sense. So what I'm doing here now is I'm going x squared minus 8x and I'm adding on my 16. I'm subtracting the 16 and then again, putting back in my negative 3 equals 0. Now, I haven't done anything, what we say, illegal or anything wrong there. Basically, all I've done is I've gone a plus 16 minus 16. Well, you know that plus 16 minus 16 still gives me zero. So I haven't really done anything wrong there. I've just basically added and subtracted the same number. But it will be helpful now in a second when we're completing our square. My next step now is that I'm going to factorize. I'm going to factorize out the first three terms in this list or in this equation. So I'm going to factorize x squared minus 8x plus 16 and then I'm going to put the minus 16 and the negative 3 together. Okay, so that's my next step. So I'm factorizing the quadratic equation x squared minus 8x plus 16. So I'm drawing my two brackets and x by x is x squared so it must be that and two numbers that multiply to positive 16 and add to minus 8 our minus 4 by minus 4 gives me positive 16 and minus 8 minus 4, or sorry, minus 4 minus 4 is minus 8. So that's fine. And then I'm doing my final part, which is negative 16 minus 3, which is giving me negative 19. So I'm putting in my negative 19 equals to 0. Now what you will notice is that each time you do a complete the square, the two factors are always going to be identical. If you're not getting them identical, you've made a mistake. So they must be identical. And another way of writing x minus four times x minus four is simply x minus four squared. And then I'm gonna put in my minus 19 equals to zero. And that's our completing the square finished. That's the first example. And if you don't trust it, try it yourself. If you go multiplying this out, expand those brackets and take away 19, you will get back to this. Okay, so try it out and see. We're gonna move over to example two now and see how we get on with that one. So it's asking us to express two x squared minus 12 x plus seven in this form. This form is our completing the square where we have something squared plus our constant. Now, as I said at the very start of this video, it's this two that's going to be problematic. What we need to do first of all is factorize out that two from all of the terms. Okay, so I'm factorizing out the two. Now, when I factorize out the two, it will be straightforward for the first couple of terms because I'm just basically gonna go two bracket and two multiplied by x squared is two x squared. So that's that section done. 
2 multiplied by 6 gets me to 12. So 2, or sorry, 2 times minus 6x gets me the minus 12. I'm getting into fractions or decimals here. 2 multiplied by 3.5 is 7, or 7 over 2. Up to you what way you want to work. Is it decimals or fractions? I'm just working to fraction. So all I've done is factorized out to 2. Now you can see here I've used those curved brackets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change those curved brackets to square brackets, just so you can see um, throughout the example what I'm doing. So that's all I'm doing. I'm changing my brackets. Next step is I'm going to keep that 2 outside of my brackets and I'm basically just going to factorize or complete the square for the x squared minus 6x plus 7 over 2 exactly like we did in question 1. So I'm doing nothing different now than what I did in question 1. So what you do is you take the coefficient of the x, half it and, and square it. So the coefficient of the x is the number in front of the x, which is my minus 6. I'm halving it, gets me to minus 3. I square it, minus 3 by minus 3 gives me positive 9. So that's my first step. And that's the step that always catches people out. Next thing I do is I'm now going to add and subtract 9 to my quadratic equation. So I'm keeping that 2 outside of my bracket. Again, don't forget that 2. And it's going to be x squared minus 6x. Now I'm subtracting and adding the 9. So plus 9 minus 9 because plus 9 minus 9 still gives me 0. So I haven't done anything wrong. Plus my 7 over 2 or 3.5. Whatever way you want to do it. And we close our bracket. I'm now going to factorize the quadratic equation. X squared minus 6x plus 9. So it's going to be 2 bracket. And when I factorize that out, I'm getting my two brackets and x by x is x squared. The numbers of multiply to 9 and add to minus 6 are getting me minus 3 by minus 3. So minus 3 by minus 3 is minus 9 and minus 3 take away 3 is minus 6. And then I have the sum minus 9 plus 7 over 2. So what I'm doing now is I'm doing out this part of my sum minus 9 plus 7 over 2 and when I do that out I'm getting minus 11 over 2. Again you can be working to decimals if you wish which is minus 5.5 .5. and I'm going to keep going. You'll notice once again that the two factors x minus 3 and x minus 3 must be identical. They must be the same and I can rewrite that as x minus 3 all to be squared minus 11 over 2 and I'm going to close my bracket. Now that's an acceptable answer that is us completing the square but I'm just going to look at how they wanted us to write it. They wanted us to write it without those square brackets. They want us to have the factor of 2 in front of the x minus 3 but they want a constant on its own. So all I'm doing here is something simple I'm just basically going to multiply in this 2 so I'm basically drawing arrows here to denote that I'm multiplying into 2. So 2 multiplied by x minus 3 all to be squared is just giving me 2 bracket x minus 3 all to be squared. And then I'm going to jump my 2 multiplied by minus 11 over 2. And 2 multiplied by minus 11 over 2 gives me minus 22 over 11, which is minus 11. And now I've rewritten my completing the square form in the way they wanted it. And that's our final example. So there's two examples of completing the square. All I can say there is just remember in example two that if there's ever a number in front of the x squared, you have to factorize it out first. If you forget to factorize it, you're going to go wrong. And again, the process is that you half the coefficient of the x and then square it and add it and subtract it on. Hope it helps. Thank you for watching another tutorial video from Tullamats. Make sure and subscribe.